Hi everyone, I'm Prika and this is Art Rendezvous. Welcome to episode 11. This is a show where we celebrate art. So if you're an art lover, please like and subscribe our channel. You can also connect with us on our Instagram, live underscore art rendezvous. Our guest tonight is Diane Sonnenberg. She's a clean mosaic artist from Austin, Texas. So let's invite her on the show. Hi, Diane. Welcome to Art Rendezvous. Thanks, Krika. Hello. Glad to be here. Diane, you are an accomplished mosaic artist. How long have you been doing this and how did you start? I became a, a mosaic artist in 2003, uh, 17 years ago. And it's a very interesting story how I started creating mosaics. Um, I'd quit my job at Dell Computer when my, uh, when I, my kids were born. And um, when my youngest went to school, I wanted to um, go back to work, have a career, but not um, at Dell any longer. <laughs> so um, while I was thinking about what do I want to do with my life, I woke up one morning uh, with the thought in my head that I wanted to create mosaics. And uh, that sparked a um, inquiry for me. I began um, reading books about mosaics. I took a class and um, that's how it all started. Once I made my first mosaic, I became passionate about it and have um, taken lots of classes. I've developed my skills and uh, made thousands of mosaics since then. Uh, so that was the universe giving you a message that you need to do work with mosaic. <laughs> yes, and um, you know sometimes it pays to listen to those voices in your head. <laughs> so, what was your first art piece that you created? Um, I created a um, tiny little picture frame. I have it right here. Um, and uh, my husband now owns this um, little mosaic and um, it sits in his office. That is so cute. I was encouraged, you know, I, I thought it turned out okay. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> so from that picture frame, uh, you uh, have created so many iconic pieces and, and you, that has brought you so much fame. Uh, what was the first iconic piece that you created? And um, what was your journey from that picture frame to get there? Well, the big turning point for me was a um, 10 foot tall guitar that I uh, created for a um, public art charity project called Guitar Town that was happening in Austin. I answered a call to artists and I uh, created a design for a um, 10 foot gold guitar. And I was lucky enough to be one of, I think about 35 people um, selected to create these 10 foot guitars. And um, they supplied a fiberglass guitar shape for us. And then um, each artist took it home to their studio, decorated it, created a um, art piece. And they went on display in uh, and around Austin and then were auctioned for charity. And it was actually outside uh, Blanton Museum, the first. It That's was... right. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was very lucky to have such a great spot. <laughs> it, it was seen by lots of people. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there was another very famous uh, project that was done by uh, um, Austin. City of Austin was the cow parade. And, and I remember seeing all these beautiful cows, uh, artistic painted cows around town. And one of them, uh, one of the cow was yours. So tell us about that, that project. 
Yeah, so I, I had so much fun with Guitar Town. Um, my um, guitar raised $55,000 for charity, which was just incredible. So I um, wanted to do it again. It was so much fun. So I created um, a um, gold cow because people seem to like gold <laughs> the first time around. And uh, this cow was named Gilded Lily. And I um, was really happy also with the location for um, her. It was right on Congress Avenue. So again, lots of people got to see her and um, it raised about um, 30, $32,000 again for charity, which is just awesome. She, she's so beautiful. What was your inspiration behind that? Um, I wanted to um, create a sacred cow. Um, you know, in the Indian tradition, um, cows are sacred. And um, part of the um, thing I'm known for is creating, um, you know, shiny, glittery, bejeweled mosaics. So I combined the two and um, came up with Gilded Lily. So the um, motif, she's got like blankets draped over her, which are uh, bejeweled. Next time you have, you create a cow inspired by Indian uh, sacred cows, then uh, reach out to me for an Indian name. <laughs> or, like, <laughs> I <point>. will. <laughs> um, Absolutely. And, and, and uh, another piece, your um, piece uh, that you created, a sculpture, or raised $250,000 for a charity. And uh, tell us about that project, that's, that's crazy. It's totally crazy. And that was far and away the um, pinnacle of um, my um, charity effort, so to speak. Uh, that was created, it was a um, longhorn cow that was, er, steer that was created for the um, Mac, Jack and McConaughey fundraiser. So um, Mac Brown, Jack Ingram and Matthew McConaughey every year put on a um, huge gala fundraiser to raise money for children's charities. And uh, we, um, I was one of the artists asked to create a longhorn and of course it had to be glitzy. Um, the idea was based on the um, Waterford Crystal football that the uh, Longhorns won when they won the uh, football championship several years ago at the Rose Bowl. So I uh, created the Longhorn with a um, several thousand um, beveled um, square mirror pieces made it look like a um, crystal cow. And um, I think I had maybe three and a half weeks to uh, create it, which meant I was working nonstop and also inviting all of my friends to come help mix mortar and spread the grout and <laughs> cut the pieces. So it was quite an adventure and um, having it uh, raise a quarter of a million dollars for charity was one of the coolest things ever. I was in the audience and uh, my husband has a little video of me jumping up and down <laughs> while they were um, coming up with that grand total. It was amazing. Well, I'm, I'm just surprised you didn't faint hearing that number. <laughs> I, I very well could have. <laughs> That was that certainly turned out to be a showstopper. Uh, yeah, it, it looked it looked really amazing. Um, uh, and one of the one of another your conversational piece that you have created is these huge eggs, uh, mosaic um, uh, embedded with mosaic art um, on it. So, what what are those, and where where are those uh, sculptures now? Well, I've got an um, image of them right up here above my head. Um, these eggs were commissioned by a private client. They um, live on a uh, ranch just outside of Austin. And um, 
Each of the eggs are six feet tall and they are um, created on styrofoam bases that are reinforced and they rotate. Each one spins around. Um, and all of that was created for me in order for me to uh, create the mosaic work, which took about uh, 14 months. Wow. It's really hard to predict how long something um, of that size will take. And I thought maybe three or four months, but <laughs> actually the um, answer was 14. And uh, they've been, uh, yeah, that, that's probably the work of art that I'm most known for. And uh, they've been seen by people all over the world. And I was uh, fortunate enough that um, in 2010, they won a um, major international um, architectural mosaic award through uh, the Society of American Mosaic Artists. And what was your inspiration for those, uh, for creating those uh, eggs, or rotating eggs? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because who would who would make something like that, right? <laughs> well, it was funny. The um, client came to me asking for um, large mosaic, glittering, mirrored, bejeweled eggs, which I thought was unusual. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, that's what you want. And it's like, no, really, we do, and we want two of them. And wouldn't it be cool if they rotated <laughs> like big disco balls in the field? <laughs> so um, I worked with them. We settled on a design that we were both happy with. And um, one of the really pleasant surprises when I um, finished the eggs and they were out um, in the space was how the mirror really reflects the um, surrounding environment. So. Um, on the top of the eggs, you see the sky. Down below, you see the ground. When the uh, weather is um, different, you see um, a different look. So th they've um, really become a part of the environment. They live on a horse ranch, and the horses um, enjoy them quite a bit. They come over to uh, check them out when they're on their um, pasture <laughs> runs. <laughs> Those look really cool. So uh, certainly a conversational piece. Um, and you were also chosen by the maestro in Italy for one of the nine artists who was chosen uh, from around the world uh, to go there and participate in the in a symposium. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, this was this was also a really big deal for me. In um, 2017, I was invited by uh, Giulio Minosi, who's one of the most famous mosaic artists in the world to um, participate in the uh, Claudiano Mosaic Symposium. It's a uh, two week event that um, he sponsors once every year or so. And he invites artists from all over the world, mosaic artists who um, have a, a career that um, he sees some value in um, helping to promote them to um, assist these artists with um, finding their voice, becoming more of a presence in the world of contemporary mosaic art. Mm -hmm. So um, in uh, the summer of 2017, I traveled to um, Claudiano, Italy, and um, nine mosaic artists from all over the world uh, joined me. And over the course of two weeks, we created um, monumental works of art which is pretty much impossible, but um, we all did it and we all finished. Um, and um, it was a, a true experience and it really was a, a turning point in my career to give me the confidence to step forward and um, become a better artist. And um, the uh, sponsors of that event were um, wineries in um, the Friuli region of Italy. Mm -hmm. And that was just an added bonus. Every night, one of the wineries would host our dinner after we were done working. <laughs> what a great experience that is. Um, and now some of your art pieces, the show pieces that you have uh, created 
uh, these circular um, circular mosaic pieces and it has something inside it. Um, what are those? I see one, one sitting right behind you also. Uh, yeah, this piece is a um, mandala. I um, create a lot of um, mandala type art. And then uh, this piece over here is one of my um, sculptural mosaic art pieces, which is what I've been creating a lot lately. Um, I, I'm basically drawn and compelled to create them. Um, a little part of my um, history is that I um, was adopted as a baby and I recently uh, reconnected with my biological family along with my um, Native American indigenous culture and uh, my community. And uh, part of that process unveiled a um, sculptural mosaic interest for me. I don't know quite um, how to um, say it in um, eloquent words, but I, I, I'm just compelled to create these pieces and each one has very um, special meaning to me. This piece that you're seeing right now is called Transcendence. And uh, this was created during the pandemic um, along with the uh, maestro from Italy. Uh, people um, stayed home, worked in our studios and created uh, mosaics that had the um, theme of uh, being free. So uh, this piece, for example, is um, rising up from the earth and uh, lightning, lightning, spinning, lightning to create a uh, rarefied um, transcendent light at the top. So these are the pieces that you create, uh, you know, they, they are available for sale, uh, but you also do a lot of commission work. Um, and so tell us some of the uh, commission work that you have done in the past. Yeah, yeah. So I divide my time um, between um, my own artwork and um, commissions. People contact me looking for a um, mosaic tabletop or a um, ceiling or a swimming pool insert. Um, I uh, recently created a um, mosaic sofa, a um, chair that was built into a um, cob house, which is sort of like a straw bale and natural house. Um, it was built right into the wall and um, is used as a um, dining room um, seating area. And um, this uh, piece that you're seeing now uh, was created at the same place where the eggs are located and mm -hmm. was a, a reproduction of a painting that my clients owned. So I um, create pretty much, I work with the client to figure out what they want, the colors that uh, they're drawn to, and then work with them to create the design. And, and that's a really enjoyable process as well, um, helping people realize their vision, even when they don't know what it is. And one of the pictures I saw was uh, of the ceiling. Um, you have done some work on the ceiling with mosaic. How does, how does that go? Like, do you have to, to stand and, and work with it on the top? Or um, it, it might take hours to do that. It does indeed take hours. Mosaic is very um, time intensive and labor intensive. So um, unlike Michelangelo, I did not stand um, with my um, head facing up to finish that. Um, I create the mosaic in my studio on a backing of fiberglass mesh. And then I cut it up into pieces, box it up, and uh, ship it or deliver it to the client. And in that case, I had a um, contractor, a tile expert who worked with me to um, install the piece on the ceiling. And I did have to get up on scaffolding, which I do not like, <laughs> but you know, you do what you have to do. Wow. <laughs> um, that is very interesting. Uh, you also uh, teach classes and um, 
you also teach mosaic? I do. I've been teaching mosaics for probably about 12 years now. And I'm on the faculty at the uh, Contemporary Austin Art School at Laguna Gloria. And then I also teach my um, particular techniques in um, studios all across North America. Uh, since the pandemic, of course, all of the classes have um, transferred online. And, and that's actually working out surprisingly well. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but um, it's going great. And I, I have a um, class on mosaic arts online, which is um, even better. People just buy the course and then they watch it in their own time. It's not a live course, so they can um, watch it, create their mosaic, watch it again. And um, so there are um, lots of different ways I'm um, working with life as it is right now to continue um, allowing people to um, learn mosaics and to be creative. And uh, does this quarantine has uh, inspired you to create something different or something new uh, from what you have been doing? Uh, it has. It's been a really interesting process for me. Um, you know, being forced, of course, to um, stay at home. Um, that yields um, the, the, the process of actually thinking outside the box. And uh, during the quarantine, I actually had to uh, drive my daughter to Toronto, Canada, where she's, um, was, she's beginning a master's program at the University of Toronto. So I um, thought about, you know, what, what can I do? We're gonna have to quarantine once we cross the border to Canada mm -hmm. for two weeks. Yeah. So yeah. I packed up a um, couple bags with uh, some small projects and jewelry items and jewelry makings. And um, I set up shop at our Airbnb in Toronto, which was just fabulous. I had a little um, covered patio out back looking over a beautiful garden. So I was inspired to create a, a series of jewelry um, Pendants, one of which I'm wearing here today. And I think we've got some photos of some of the others. And uh, they've turned out to be just a lot more successful than I could have hoped. I've um, sold quite a lot of them. And um, I, I have fun making them because it's something that I can create uh, very quickly mm -hmm. as opposed to um, these larger pieces, which take weeks, months, finish and how do you get your material like your the material that i have seen in all your artwork seems uh very um uh, intricate and um it's, it seems super expensive probably <laughs> uh how, how do you get that yeah most of it is super expensive you're right <laughs> uh there is a um it for uh, folks in Austin, um, there is a uh, stained glass shop called Blue Moon Glass in the Hyde Park area. And they sell a lot of uh, mosaic materials, which is wonderful. You can actually go over there in person and choose your materials. But a lot of the things that I use are um, more um, particular, like mm -hmm. uh, Italian glass multi and uh, 24 karat gold tile particular kinds of stone and um, semi-precious gems. And for those, uh, there are uh, resources online that uh, particular vendors that I shop with. And uh, when I was in Italy, I made a point to uh, stop into um, a couple of the factories and stock up with as much as I could carry back in my luggage. <laughs> So I'm guessing those two bags are not enough for you. You probably need much more. <laughs> well, I had to leave some of my clothes there, um, actually, <laughs> in order to make it back. <laughs> okay. Donated to the local um, resale. <laughs> well, um, I'm looking forward to your next iconic piece and thinking what you're going to create next. Um, it's a, it was a real pleasure talking to you, Diane. Thank you for being here. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. This was fun.
So that was our show for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. We'll be back soon with more art and inspiring stories. Until then, stay safe. Bye.